Hello, everybody. So today we're going to continue our start module 12. And our first lesson will be working on graphing on the coordinate plane. And so basically our essential question that you should be able to answer is how do you locate and name points in the coordinate plane? So let's go ahead and look at some of the vocabulary for that's important to this. A coordinate plane is formed by two number lines that intersect at right angles. So we have this number line going left to right, and we have another line, number line going up and down. And so the two number lines are called the axes. They intersect at the point zero. The horizontal axis is called the X axis. And the vertical axis is called the Y axis. Okay, the point where they intersect, I mentioned that zero, that's called the origin. Okay, the origin is on both the Y and the X axis. Okay, the two axes divide the coordinate plane into four quadrants. So this first quadrant is quadrant one. And then we go counterclockwise for the rest of the quadrants. Quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Now, an ordered pair is a pair of numbers that gives the location of a point on a coordinate plane. The first number tells how far to the right or left the point is located from the origin. The second number tells how far up or down the point is located from the origin. So the first number in the ordered pair is to say how far left or right you are along the X axis. And then the Y is how high or low you are. From the origin. Okay. And so the numbers in an order pair are called coordinates. The first number is the x coordinate and the second number is the y coordinate. Okay, so we're going to look at some of these now. So example one. So identify the coordinates of each point. Name the quadrant where each point is located. And so point A, <clears throat> find point A. Point A is right here. It's one unit to the left of zero and one, two, three, four, five units down from the origin. So the X coordinate, since it's to the left of zero or to the left of the origin, that's negative one. It was five units down or negative five. So five units down from zero or five units below zero is also negative. So it's negative one, negative five. Negative one, negative five. And so that's located in quadrant three. Okay, how about point B? Point B, we notice it's two units to the right of zero. So it makes it positive. And it is one, two, three units up or above zero or above the origin. So this ordered pair is 2, 3. The x coordinate is 2, the y coordinate is 3, and we write it as 2, comma, 3. And it's located in quadrant 1. So quadrant 1 has positive and positive coordinates. Quadrant 2 will have a negative and a positive. So the x is going to be negative in quadrant 2, and the y will be positive. In quadrant 3, we'll have two negative coordinates. The x is negative as well as the y. And in quadrant 4, the x value is going to be positive, and the y value will be negative. Okay, all right. So let's continue on to page 334. So on the reflex section, if both coordinates of a point are negative, in which quadrant is the point located? All right, well, so let's look at it again. Both points are negative. So that would be quadrant three. We would have to go left from the origin. That would be negative. And we're going to be going down, which is also negative. So quadrant three.
Okay, how about to describe the coordinates of all points in quadrant one? Okay, let's look at quadrant one. So we said that you have to go to the right of zero, so that's going to be positive along the x, and you have to go up to be in this quadrant, so that's positive as well. So both coordinates are positive. All right, so now explain why negative 3, 5 represents a different location than 3, 5. Okay, so let's address negative 3, 5. So we know that to go to negative 3, that's going to be to the left of the origin, and it's going to go up. So this is going to be in quadrant 2. Because negative 3 is to the left of the origin, and 5 is above the origin. Okay, so what's different about 3, 5? Well, 3, 5, this time the x-coordinate is positive. So it's going to be in quadrant 1. Three is to the right of the origin. And five is above the origin. Okay. So again, if we have two positive coordinates, positive x, positive y, it's going to be in quadrant one. If you have a negative x and a positive y, it's going to be in quadrant 2. So 3 and negative 3 are not the same, right? Negative 3 is to the left of 0, and positive 3 is to the right. All right, so now let's just practice naming the coordinates. So first off, we know that all the coordinates will be put in parentheses. And we also know that they're going to be separated by a comma. All right, so G. Where's G? Okay, well, here we have a positive value and a negative value. So that's quadrant 4. H is a negative, whoops, a negative and a negative. And that is going to be quadrant 3. E is going to be a negative and a positive. It's in quadrant 2. And finally, quadrant 1, we're going to find positive and positive. Okay, so those are just some general things that we should notice all the time. Okay, we always know that this quadrant's 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. They will never switch. That's always what their quadrant numbers are. All right, so G. So we go to G. And we see that it's four units to the right. So it's positive four. And then it went down to negative four. So it's four, negative four. And it's in quadrant four. All right now, let's find E. E is right there. And E, we have to go two units to the left, so the x-coordinate is negative two, and we have to go up four units from the origin, so two, negative two, four, and that's in quadrant two. F, 
F is going to be in, located in quadrant one, right? Okay, the first one is quadrant one. It's three units to the right. Number that's in between two and four is three. And so the x coordinate's three, and we have to go up one, two units. So both of those are positive, and we're in quadrant one. And finally, h. h is in the third quadrant. And we have to go just over one from the, to the left of the origin. And then we're going to go down three spaces. So we're at negative one, negative three. Okay. All right. How about graphing points? Okay, so we were that's naming the points. Now, how about graphing them? So point A says negative 5, 2. So we go over 5 to the left of the origin and up 2. And we put a, a dot at five, negative 5, 2, and we would call that point A. Point B, they said it's over 3 to the right of the origin and up one and a half. So we know that each mark is one. So one and a half is going to be in between one and two. And so it would be halfway in between. And we put a dot to mark the location and we put point B. And point C is zero. So we're going to stay on the origin and go down negative three. So we'd say that point C is on the Y axis. All right, so let's let's practice doing some graphing. All right, so number eight. It says find point P. Label each point on the coordinate plane. So P is over negative four and up two. All right, so that's P. Negative four, two. Q is to the right three because it's positive and up two and a half. So right three, up two and a half. Well, so this mark is three, so two and a half will be in between two and three. So right there. So again, over three, up two and a half. R is four and a half to the right, uh, to the left is negative, and down five. Well, four and a half is in between, so there's that would be four and a half, and we gotta go down five though. So it'd be right about there. We'll call that point B. All right, S oh to the right four, down five. To the right four, down five. And finally, T, the x coordinate is negative, negative two and a half, and the y coordinate is zero. So point T is on the x axis. Okay. So those are that's basically how you graph them. X is first, so go left or right of the origin. Second value is the y-axis, and so you're going to go up or down. I'm sorry, the y-coordinate, and so you're going to go up or down from the origin. All right, how about reading scales on axes? The scale of an axis is the number of units that each grid line represents. So far, the graphs in this lesson, lesson have a scale of one unit, but graphs frequently use other units. Okay, so for instance, the graph in example three shows the location of a city. It also shows the location of Gary's and Jen's houses. The scale on each axis represents miles. But you'll notice that it's not by ones, right? So we go from origin here, and we have this mark and then this mark. So the distance that's halfway between zero and 10 must be five, right? So each side of the grid in this one is five along the y-axis. How about going to the x? That's also 
counting by fives. So we're not counting by ones. This time we're counting by five. And we're not counting units. We're saying five miles. So every line is five miles. All right, so use the scale to describe Gary's location relative to the city. All right, so the city we notice is at the origin, zero, zero. Gary is one mark past negative 20, so he's at negative 25 and up to the number between 10 and 20, so he's at 15. So negative 25, 15 is what we would call or describe Gary's house. All right, how about Jen's house? Jen's house is one mark between zero and 10 to the right. It says a positive, it's in a positive direction. So that's five, five miles. Oh, I'm sorry, relative to Gary's house. Okay, so we go from Gary's house and we go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 units. So she's 30 miles from Gary's house. She's at the same location north, right, as Gary. So they're the same distance above the origin, but Gary and Jen are about 30 miles apart. How do we know that? Because each line represents five. So what's the distance between Gary and Jen? One, two, three, four, five, six lines, and each line is worth five, so 30. And so that's where we get 30 miles from Gary's. All right, so now we're gonna do it. All right, so Ted, use the graph in example three. Ted lives 20 miles south and 20 miles west of the city, represented on the graph. All right, so west, we notice he has to go left. So he's 20 miles south and 20 miles west. I'm gonna go west first, 20, and down 20. So Ted's right here at negative 20, negative 20. All right, so negative 20, negative 20. And then his brother lives 45 miles north. 45 miles north. So that must mean that Ned has the same x coordinate. Okay. Because <clears throat> it didn't say he lived five miles west or east of Ted. It just says he lives 45 miles north. So we're just going to go up 45 which would be nine lines, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So Gary's at negative 20, 25. I'm sorry, Ned. Ned is at negative 20, 25. So he's in the same X coordinate as Ted, but he's nine grid lines above. How about 336? Identify the coordinates of each point in the coordinate plane and name the quadrant where each point is located. Point A is five units left of the origin and one unit up from the origin. Its coordinates are negative five, one because we're to the left of the origin and we're above the origin point b point b is going to be two units to the right of the origin and one two three units down from the origin so its coordinates are two units right three units below the origin, so negative three. And it is in quadrant four. Again, this is one, two, three, four. 
I, I skipped one up here. Um, a, A is in quadrant two. All right, graph and label each point on the coordinate plane above. Graph point C at negative three and a half, three. So we're gonna go three and a half units to the left of the origin. And so that's gonna be, that'll be right there and then up three. So over negative three and a half and up three. And we're going to call that point C. Okay, so let me zoom in on this so you can see that a little better. So I know that each line is worth one in this scale. And so this must be three. And so three and a half has to be in between three and four, right? Okay, and then we'll just go up to the third line above the coordinate, above the origin. Okay, and point D is at five, zero. So five is positive, so that means go to the right and stay on the x-axis because zero, zero is the y-coordinate. And so that's point D. And we say point D is on the x-axis. All right, number five. Describe the scale of the graph. Well, in this one, so we start at the origin, and then I see a space in between 0 and 1. So each of these marks has to be 1 half on each side, right? So it's a half unit on each side. So, all right, so with that in mind, point, plot point A at negative a half, two. So negative a half, we're going to go to the first mark to the left of the origin and up two. And that will be point A. Point B, we're going to go right two and a half, down two. Right two and a half, down two. All right, so describe how an ordered pair represents a point on a coordinate plane. Include the, include the terms x-coordinate, y-coordinate, coordinate, and origin in your answer. So what's the, the first number in the ordered pair? What is the first number in the ordered pair name? Well, that tells the location of the x coordinate. Okay, so the first number in an ordered pair tells us the location of the x coordinate. The second number. in the ordered pair it tells the location of the y coordinate. Let's see, for the x-coordinate, we can say how far left or right of the origin. And the y-coordinate will be how far up or down from the origin. All right, so number nine, give the coordinates of one point in each of the four quadrants, 
one point on the x-axis and one point on the y-axis. Axis. All right, so if I want to go to quadrant one, quadrant one has to be a positive and a positive. So x has to be positive, y has to be positive. So I'm just going to say one, three. Okay, you can choose any two positive values for x and y. Quadrant two. In quadrant two, I'm left of the origin, so it has to be a negative x and a positive y because we're above zero or above the origin. So a negative and a positive. So I'm just going to say negative one, three for quadrant two. In quadrant three, quadrant three is going to be right here, right? One, two, three. We're going to be negative x and a negative y, so negative, negative. So I'm gonna say negative one, negative three. And quadrant four, in quadrant four, we're gonna have a positive x and a negative y because we're below the origin. So I'm gonna go one, negative three. All right, so those are the points in each of the quadrants. Now I have to put a point on the x-axis. So that means the y is 0. So we can just say something like, um, I don't know, 1, 0. It doesn't matter what, y, what x is as long as y is 0. Because when you say a value is zero, a y value is zero, that means you're not going above or below the origin. You're staying on this line, and this line is the x-axis. Okay, so what about the y-axis? So if we don't leave the y-axis, that means we don't go left or right of the origin. We stay along this line. So we'd be on the y-axis. So in that case, the x coordinate has to be zero, and you can choose any y value. I just go with one. Okay. All right. So those just solve some possibilities. All right. And three thirty-seven. So number ten, write the ordered pair that represent the location of Sam and the theater. All right. Well, where's Sam? Sam is four units to the right of the origin, so that's positive four, and he's two units above the origin. So he's in quadrant one. The theater is one, two, three units left of the origin, so he's, the theater's at negative three, and it's up, there's one unit above four, so five. So it's in quadrant two. All right, so describe Sam's, Sam's location relative to the theater. Well, he's <clears throat> relative, Sam's location relative to the theater. So how many units east is he of the theater? And it's telling us that each square is one, one kilometer. Okay, so Sam is one, two, three, three units south. One, two, three. Now we're at the same level above the origin. So he's three kilometers south of the theater. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units or seven kilometers east of the theater. Okay, again, it says relative to the theater. So where is Sam? He's 
one, two, three kilometers south, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kilometers east. I know that because I'm using the compass rows here. Okay. All right, number 12. Sam wants to meet his friend Beth at a restaurant before they go to the theater. The restaurant is nine kilometers south of the theater. Plot and label a point representing the restaurant. All right, so that must mean it's in the same X location. The X coordinate of the restaurant is the same as the theater. So we just got to go down nine, un nine units or nine kilometers from the theater. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we can call that the restaurant. Well, the location points of that is negative three, negative four. All right, 13. Beth decides her current location. I'm directly south of the theater, halfway to the restaurant. I'm directly south of the theater, halfway to the restaurant. Plot and label point, point representing Beth's location. Okay, so if you're directly south of the theater, it means you're at negative three, halfway. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, what was half of nine? Four and a half. So we have to go down four and a half units. One, two, three, four. So they are at positive half or 0 0.5 so negative 3 0 0.5 how did I get that again so I know that the distance between the theater and the restaurant is 9 halfway means divide by 2 right so 4 divided by 9 divided by 2 I can put 4 into each group of 2 with 1 as a remainder so 4 and a half or well, four and a half lines. So I went from the theater and went down four and a half marks. One, two, three, four. So I knew it had to be between zero and one, which is a half. So she's right there. Okay. All right, 14 and, for 15, 14 and 15, use the coordinate plane shown. So we have V and U. Find the coordinates of T, U, and V. All right, so T, so it looks like each of these lines is a quarter, okay, because I see one, two, three, four lines between zero and one. And this is saying it's halfway between zero and one. So this is a 0 0.25, and that's 0 0.75. So T is over a quarter, a half, 0 .37, uh, 0 0.75, and it is down negative 1. Negative 1.0. U is over, it's in between half and 1, so that's 0 0.75, and it's above the origin and it's at one and a quarter so 1.25 and v v is also negative 0 0.75 and it's as high as u so 1.25 all right, points T, U, and V are the vertices of a rectangle. Point W is the fourth vertex. Plot point W and give its coordinates. All right, so basically what we're saying is if we were to join all these points, W would be right there. Okay. So plot W and give its coordinates. All right, so W is at the same 
distance from the origin as v is. So it's over negative 7, 75 hundredths. Oops. And it's down to negative 1.0. Sixteen. Janine tells her friend that order pairs that have an x coordinate of zero lie on the x axis. She uses the origin as an example. Describe Janine's error. Okay, so remember that the origin is on both of the axes or both of the axes. So she's describing points that lie on the y axis. Okay, so if the order pair is on the x-axis, that means the y-coordinate has to be zero, okay? Because it's not moving above or below the origin. It's staying right on here, all right? And so the origin, though, is on the x and y axis. So any other point with a coordinate x coordinate of zero lies on the x on the y axis. So we're saying zero. That means it's not moving anywhere from left to right from the origin, but it's going up and down. So if that's true, if the x coordinate is zero, then you're on the y axis, not the x axis. All right, seventeen. Uh, choose scales for the coordinate plane shown so that you can graph the points J, 240, K, 310, L, 3, negative 40, M, negative 4, 50, and N, negative 5, negative 50. And explain why you chose the scale for this. Well, for the X's, it basically goes from negative 5 to 3. So I'm going to count those by ones. Might as well just count those by ones. So I'm going to put negative two here, negative four there. I'll put two here, four there. Okay. But now the y's, I don't want to count by ones there. Go, that's pretty high. We have 40, 50, 10. So those are all multiples of 10, right? So let's count by tens. So we can call this 20. 40, so each mark is 10. We can do the same thing going down, negative 20, negative 40, so on. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Negative 20, negative 30, negative 40, negative 50. I skipped a line. All right, so we'll count by 10s going up, by 1s going left and right. All right, so J is at 240, over 2, up to mark 40, and that's J. K is at 3, up 10. 
L is at 3, negative 40. So over 3, down to 40 for point L. M is at negative 4, up 50. Point M. And N is at negative 5, negative 50. Negative 5, negative 50. All right, so we've graphed all our points. Now, why did we choose ones and tens? Well, I used a scale of one. Okay, so I chose 1 because the range was just negative 5 to 3. So it would be easy to count by 1s. But on the y-coordinate, the y-axis, I used a scale of 10. The range was negative 50 to 50. Okay, so we didn't want to count by ones or even twos or fives. Tens made more sense. Okay, 18. Edgar wants to plot the ordered pair one and eight temps and negative one and two temps on a coordinate plane. On each axis, one grid square equals one tenth. Starting at the origin, how can Edgar find 1 and 8 temps and negative 1 and 2 temps? All right, so if each grid square is 1 tenth, in 1 and 8 temps, that means in one whole, remember 1 equals 10 temps. So 1 and 8 temps would be 18 temps. So count 18 grid squares. Grid squares To the right of the origin, okay, because eighteen temps is one and eight temps. And count down twelve squares from the origin because twelve temps equal one and two temps. 19a. In which Zach graphs some order pairs in the coordinate plane. The x values of the order pairs represent the number of hours since noon, and the y values represent the temperature. In which quadrants could Zach graph points? All right, so if we're saying time is the x coordinate and temperature is the y coordinate. Well, time can't be negative, right? So that means all the points have to be to the right of the origin. So that means we have to be in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. Quadrant 1s are 4.
Okay. So temperature, okay, I actually could have gone in any quadrant, right? The only reason that you can't have all four quadrants is because time is not positive or negative. I mean, time is not negative. So you can't use quadrants two and three because that's to the left of the origin, which are negative X values. All right, so B, in what part of the world and at what time of the year might Zach collect data so that the points he plots are in quadrant four? So let's quickly look at quadrant four here. So we know that it's the time is positive, but everything below the coordinate here is negative. So it's below zero degrees. So that's really cold, right? So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking of some place like Minnesota in the winter. Or in general, it needs to be a region that has a cold climate, right? All right, so if I had to give a specific place, I, I'd name it like Minnesota in the United States. And in general, if I was looking around the world, I just basically would try to find a region that has a really cold climate during the winter. All right. So that's it for the coordinate plane and graphing points. We'll continue working with the coordinate grid in our next lesson. So until then, I'll see you soon.